Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Okay, go ahead. Do what you were doing before we started this call. Go ahead. Hey, Mrs. Bennett, can Alex come out and play? The gang's here. Throw us down a nickel for the moon pitches. We're gonna see. We're gonna see Tom Mix, our gang, and the best of I am Curious Yellow. Hey, Mrs. <laughs> Bennett, throw us down a nickel for the moon pitches. Thank you. Yeah, that was yeah. my street ragamuffin from the forties. I wonder, was it a nickel back then? I guess it was when I started going to the movies, uh, which was back in the in the late 40s, early 50s. That was a time when they would, the, the, mom and dad wouldn't drive you to the movies. I was a uh, mile away from the movies. No, you walk to the movies. You walk uphill both ways to the movies. Yeah, well, I had to walk uphill going back, yeah. Yeah, hold yeah. on, someone's at the door, don't go away. Oh, yeah, don't look in my car, don't worry. Uh, where, where, where did he go? What, what happened to him? Where, where is he at the present time? Did he, did he just, did he just disappear? He just, he just, he just went away. We have no idea where he went. But he's, he's coming back. I'm sure. What, what was that? What is this? Sorry thing? about that. Sorry, I got visitors. There's a guy coming to look at my car because my car broke down. After I had a crappy mechanical gadget. Yeah, so well, hold crazy. on a second. I put my own picture up. Yeah. Oh, what were you saying? What happened? Sorry about that. Say hello to my friends. Come on. This is Scotty and Linda. Hello. Hi, Scotty and Linda. How are hello. you? All, all, yeah. all masked up. Yeah. yeah. What's up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what, what are they? Well, they're your audience then. I got it. We got a portable audience. just like in the old days. Well, there were two people there for you to do comedy to, which is kind of like late night at the Holy City Zoo. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Or, or Saturday night at the comedy store. But I got <laughs> <laughs> to tell you, folks. So what's okay. happening? You got a lot of smoke down there? A lot of smoke? Uh, well, I haven't seen my guy yet, but, uh, you know. No, no, no. Of, I'm not oh, talking that's... about that. I'm talking oh, about... That. I'm talking about the wildfires. I love I love having a live audience. It's a wonderful thing, man. Yeah. You know, the, the marvel of the live orchestra is that it presents as many colors. Let's yeah. hear the lifestyle on the oboe. That was my Jack Jones impression. Oh, okay. okay. What were we talking about? Anyway, no, no. I, what, I, what I was wondering is uh, you got a lot of smoke down there? Uh, it's, it's hazy, but not really. You know, you got to be in L.A. for that stuff. Because in, uh, you California. know that smoke that was coming in from California and, yeah, and sure. the, the West Coast? We got it here in New York. You got smoke in New York? Yes, and they in and they, Wyoming? they supposedly have it have gotten it as far as Europe. Europe, holy crap, man! That, that's how big these fires are. That's insane. That's just a little old London fog, you know. Good old cold, gray, sooty, rainy, dirty, filthy London. We but where you fog. are, there probably aren't many forest fires because sand doesn't burn. That's right. Sand doesn't burn. Well, and the bodies under the sand are all rotted, so there's nothing there to burn. So. <laughs> hey, don't Bugsy make a nice fire. <laughs> Look at the fire now. Hey, Rocco, get the gasoline. Yeah. So you miss doing comedy? Of course I miss doing comedy. It's like, you know, does a junkie miss that? Does, you know, I mean, does do, Robert do, Young miss his coffee? Do you, do you, do you like, wonder if you're like losing it because you're not doing I, it? Well, it's like I'm keeping, I'm doing these Zoom interviews and they're kind of keeping me sane. So you and other people and, I'm, and, I, and I did a show with like a couple other comics the other day. Uh, and it was, I feel like I'm kind of back in the game. What, what do you mean you did really. a show with other comics? You mean you did a, a, a Zoom? It's one of those things. It looks like Hollywood Squares. Is like, like yeah, it's a Zoom Black show. Of the comics and Paul Lynn's in the middle. How oh, yeah. the answer is Twinkies. You know, so, uh, <laughs> and then do each of you do a, a do five minutes or ten minutes or what? We, yeah, we do that. We kibitz and everybody talks over each other and nobody hears a thing. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Who's doing that? Where can we find it if we want to see it? What was the one I just did? 
That's right. Nancy Levine and Robin Blankensiegel <laughs> in, in New York. Oh, yeah. boy. Well, in New York. I wonder why. Uh, surprise, surprise. Siegel and, uh, and Levine. Oh, yeah. Schwartzberg and Bernstein. <laughs> yeah, Boys. surprise. Oh. They're from New York. She's so Jewish, Menachem Begin called her a So kite. basically, gotta... basically, basically, <laughs> basically, you're cheating on me. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm a slut. What can I tell you? Like, <laughs> gets, me out, the, gets me out of the room going, oh, boy, the bra commercial's on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, is there any place we can watch it if we if we want to see it? What do we do? Yeah, I'll, I'll get the video and, and get it to me soon. Yeah. Okay, uh, Linda will get it to me, and I'll send it to you, and it'll pass it around like a hot potato. Yeah, nobody will yeah. Do. okay, good. good, good. What, is she working as your manager or something? Or She should be, man. She's got some, <laughs> she gets more stuff done in a day than I get in a year. So Yeah. 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 Military man, she gets stuff. You know, we get more done in five a.m. before you, you lazy son of a bitch. Put that crack pipe right down. Join the brains. Go on. Now, so, are these friends you knew before you moved to right. moved to Las Vegas, or are these friends that you made in Las Vegas? Uh, she moved to LA. A lot of people are moving here. Some people are moving out because the gigs are all closed down, which is sad because sooner or later it's gonna. I think yeah, but wherever you go, the gigs are closed down. No, not Massachusetts. Come. Lenny Clark is still doing gigs, so there's a couple of little. Oh, really? Here. Yeah, good. Hey, doing? How you doing? Hey, how was that? Well, wait yeah. till wait till a major infection breaks out in in well, Massachusetts. Then, then it's all through for, for Lenny. Places, but you know, you want to move to like Hoople, North Dakota, or something. I don't. So, this this is it for me. This is the last stop before you know the ground. So yeah. Uh, so what what's happening? Are the are the casinos open there? He's in yes. Vegas. The ones this that is are opening. Yeah. Tropicana which has one of my favorite rooms, the Laugh Factory, and the finest green room you'll ever see, um, is is opening, but the, the Laugh Factory is still closed down. There's no comedy. There's nothing, no entertainment there. Yeah. So, yeah, but, I mean, do they, are they letting people go into the casinos? What's that? Are, are, the, are, are the casinos the open? I mean, are, uh, I think some of them are in the showrooms. Am I right? No. It's I'm basically wrong. gambling. That's it. That's no it. No showrooms. Yeah. Wow. Some goes away. I think final bankruptcy. Oh, no. Who filed for bankruptcy? Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. Cirque du Soleil. Oh, yes, they did. I read about that. Wow, yeah. And Circus Circus is getting fumigated again. But I'll, tell you about, I'll tell you about the Cirque <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about Cirque du Soleil. Okay. So my wife says, have you ever seen Cirque du Soleil? And I go, no. Well, they're, they're on Rikers Island, not Rikers Island, but whatever the island is out there. And they've set up a tent and they're doing yeah. their show. So let's uh -huh. go. So I, she says, you got to see this. And we went to it, and it was the worst piece of crap I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and she had to agree. She said, this isn't like the Cirque du Soleil I saw years ago. Uh, I went, well, whatever it is, it really blew. Wow, they call it Bronx Olay or something. Bronx Olay, yeah. Welcome to Bronx Olay. How you doing? What you so when I heard the Cirque du Soleil uh, uh, went bankrupt, I went, no wonder. Yeah. You know, I mean... Uh, <laughs> But what do they go bankrupt because of the COVID, or they just go bankrupt because they suck? They got shut down. Huh? They got shut down. I guess everybody got shut down. Everybody yeah. got shut down, yeah. and nobody can go anywhere. And they go. Oh, I wonder what my friends Penn and Teller are doing. Uh, well, they probably got enough money to live the rest of their lives. Well, so. yeah, that that's true. But I mean, uh, they, they they you know they were the house act at the Rio. For yeah, three, they three don't worry. Years. I don't think Brad Garrett worries. I don't think uh, some of these people worry, but uh, some of them do. You know, my friend Harry Basil, uh, he's got a family to support, and he's, he's a good guy. But, I mean, but, I mean, Penn yeah, and Teller probably can't play anywhere unless they maybe do a little TV thing here and there, you know. Yeah. And then they got know. no audience for that. They had that TV show they did on, uh, uh, on the uh, CW, which was Fool Us, which, uh -huh. you know, it was a great idea, great concept for them. Have you ever seen it? In which no. the magicians come on, they do their their little act, and then they have to figure out how it was done. But, oh, okay. but they yeah. talk about it in code, so the audience doesn't isn't spoiled oh, yeah, yeah, for the art. And uh, it was a great concept, and they would do this. Yeah, you do, yeah. They yeah, would do the 13 episodes of this every summer. There wasn't one this year. I already saw the woman in half. The captain has a white beard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you solve the woman in half? Very slowly. Very slowly, right? Very right. slowly. Don't yeah. forget the golf ball in the mouth so you can't hear the screams. Yeah. That's, that's, right. that's the I only way. That was, that, was, that was the first guy to ever do it. I think if we gag her, we won't hear any screams. Hey, it worked. Yeah. It worked. She's dead, but it worked. You can only do it once. Get another girl. 
Yeah, yeah. I ran out of horses. Well, that's so. all. That's all you ever needed for sex was a condom and a gag. <laughs> These days, all I need is a condom, a gag, and a splint. <laughs> I gotta tell you. These days, I want sex, but I want to watch cartoons. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's do all those. Let's do all those. I can't get them up. Get it up. Jokes anymore. Uh, jokes. Oh, uh, 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 I, now it takes me all part. night to do what I used to be able to do all night. Thank you. Now I tell you, heads you get no tail, tail you get no heads. Well, I'll tell you, they did this thing for me, you know, with, when I got the prostate cancer, uh, they did the they did the radiation, which is really fun because I, I really enjoyed that because it was like science fiction, you know? Yeah. Okay. They would come along, this, they'd spend some time lining things up, and then all of a sudden, about two minutes, they would radiate. And you don't feel a damn thing. Okay, you wonder, you walk away, and you go, they're charging something like $50,000 for this. Yep. Are they doing anything, or is it just a light show for my benefit? Yeah, you know? yeah. The old, the old and, light show is still working. So right, so, and then they did work. they did the prostate seeds, where they put in these radioactive seeds in my prostate, and that's supposed to kill whatever prostate cancer is in there. And they did it's a PSA work. test afterwards, and it, by golly, it went down to almost zero. Okay. Jeez. So anyway, um, so excuse me, I have the allergies. Uh, so. Uh, they did that, and I read. Well, you know, you might not, you might have problems. You know, you lose your sex drive, uh -huh. right? And I'm going. Whenever I'm never losing my sex drive, I'm still horny. And after the operation, I'm I'm jerking off like crazy. You know, oh, I'm just I'm, I'm horny all the time. But as the months have gone on, <laughs> I look at porn and go, I don't really care about her. <laughs> you know, I well, I really don't I really don't care now. about this porn, and I'm yeah. looking for porn I might be interested in, and the universe gets smaller and uh, smaller, uh, uh, and it's like it's it's killed my sex drive. Oh my God, that'll do it. Too much, too much ain't enough, and a uh, little is too much. What are you gonna do? Yeah, exactly. So, so how have you been feeling? What's that? How have you been feeling? Well, I'm good. I did the hospital three weeks ago today, and yeah. I'm fine. And uh, you know they. They did a couple of catheters on me, but I was out, and yeah. they said there was a tube down my throat. I hope it was a tube, because when I woke up, my throat was sore, and the doctor was pulling up his pants and smiling. Yeah. But uh, it was, I, I, I feel great. I've been totally stressed out, and I haven't had a single AFib uh, incident. So, yeah. I think yeah. so here's what happens, folks. You see, as you get older, uh, at dinner, it, you're not talking about you know who you got laid, how you got laid last week, but you talk about your medical condition. Oh, I'm talking about how I got laid in 1984. Yeah, so. yeah, right. But I mean, it, it, you know what I'm saying? You know, it, yeah, it's just sure. the whole okay. the whole subject. So here I am, my old comedy pal, Stephen Pearl, who I've Ooh. known for, what, 30 years? Right. Longer than that, maybe 35 40, years? I think I started doing the show in 82. Really? And I've, known, I've known about you since 1970, so yeah, I've known yeah, you well, forever. Well, but, but the point is that back then, we never had a discussion about I wouldn't have my AFib operation and I'm feeling better after doing it, you know? Oh, no, like, hey, I got that eight ball and I was with the twins last night. Yeah, I did a bullet. <laughs> exactly. That was like 2020. Oh, God, I had my spleen removed and my spine. Oh, if I fall in, if I get gelatin-like, you know. Yeah, just... They put seeds in my prostate and now I've, <laughs> uh, I've got a, a tree sprouting out of my ass, you know. <laughs> Another few years, just like, so, did you hear about Morty? Passed away. Oh, really? Does Richie know? Oh, Richie passed away. Oh, my God. Does Dolores know? Passed away. Listen, I, I, I had a, uh, um, uh, I, I, I was, uh, there was, I, I was in a, uh, a thing where I got some money from somebody. But I got it because there was a list of people that were on there, three of us, and one of them died. So I split it with the other guy. Hey, I don't blame you. There you go. Super right? mathematics. But then he went and dropped dead. But he dropped dead too late before I could. They could say to me, "You're the only one left." <laughs> Last man standing. Yeah. I, and I would have gotten all the money. So. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> You know. I know. I was going through my Facebook thing. There's a picture of me and Robin Williams and Kevin Meany and uh, Marty Allen. Oh, jeez, oh, almighty. Yeah, here's a picture of me and Robin and uh, Dick Gregory. Okay, I'm the only one left. Here's another picture of me. Oh, my God. Hey, listen, I you live, you live long. Listen, I turned 80, okay? 
I can't tell you the amount of people in my life who are dead. Oh God, yeah, I got. I like had, one of them behind you, I had what I called three best friends. Okay, because I don't, I don't say best friend for everybody I know. Some people say, oh, so and so is my best friend. How many times you meet him once? You know, no, a, that's an acquaintance. Okay, um, you're a associate, uh, but these were friends, people who call you and say, how are you today? Yeah, right. What can I do for you? Or I call them and say, what can I do for you? Or if something goes wrong, they're there for me and whatever. I had three best friends. Two of them are dead now. There you go. And the uh, last one, my friend Shecky, um, uh, uh, I told him, you better not fucking die. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I, I, I couldn't take it. Hey, we've run out of time. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, cool. Well, it's good seeing you. I got to do my business here. Yeah. And, uh, uh, what, what you want an eight ball or a keel? No, I'm kidding. Uh, and <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's Stephen Pearl. We'll see him again next week. Bye. Thank Stephen. you very much. Okay. My, bye my bye. Friend. Okay. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, boy, am I fucking up tonight? Boy, did you hear that? That was low. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm losing it. I don't even know if this show's recording tonight. I mean, the video, the audio is that I know, but I don't know if the video is or isn't. But anyway, uh, be that as it may, if it isn't, uh, then uh, screw it. I won't post it, and nobody will watch it. And then people should learn to listen to this program when it's on. Okay. Uh, but uh, um, for fortunately, you can go over, uh, no matter what happens here, and you can always go over to, uh, where is it, uh, 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 <laughs> YouTube. And after the show's over, they post it, you know. Uh, it's just they do kind of a weird job of posting it. I don't know that I, I like it all that well. Anyway, let me see here. Let me uh, let me let me uh, admit some people to the Zoom, and then we will go over to the Zoom. And uh, there they are, ladies and gentlemen. So far, we got Jeff and we got Charlie. There are stalwarts. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Alex. What's happening? Not much. Not much. Uh, yeah. yeah. How's the, uh, how's, how, I always ask you this every day. How's the coronavirus out where you live? Well, they say it's getting better, although we did have our 700,000th case in te Texas today. 700,000th uh, case in Texas? Yep. We, yep. St we stopped it somewhere around. You're only like 420,000. Yeah, I mean, it used <laughs> to be, we were like, you know, we were infection city. And uh, here in New York, and then all of a sudden it changed, you know. And all of a sudden, Florida, Texas, but Texas, how many again? Seven hundred thousand five hundred ninety-six, I think it was. Oh, jeez. What's oh, the population God. of the state, Charlie? You mean now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, before or after? No, it, it, it's about. Well, yeah, that's a good question, 000, right? At Twenty-nine million in Texas, yeah. Million. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, we, and you know what happened here, Robert, of course, because you live over in New Jersey. Yeah. So you know how bad it got yep. here. I mean, we still hold the record yep. for the amount of people dead. I mean, here in New York City alone, I think we lost 23,000 people. But when we got it, we didn't know how to handle it. We didn't know what you did, uh, you know, how you, how you handled it in hospitals and so on. We have much better procedures for taking care of it now that uh, than we uh, we did back then but geez almighty i'm sorry for you uh be nice if you could go out right yeah it would be yeah here's brian neary ladies and gentlemen uh hello brian i'm uh i'm doing uh the wife a big closet in the bedroom yes and it's ikea ikea stuff <laughs> oh i see uh, okay do you mind if i work on this while i talk Sure, you don't mind, right? Sure, Bree, go right ahead. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. You have to wear black gloves. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by, by the way, there. yeah, Alex, Alex, you made me a you made me a hero last night. Did I really? How was that? <clears throat> yeah. Oh man, I'm freezing up. Wait, wait a minute, you are freezing up. Yeah. 
Did he have a problem with his? He pro- see, that's what happens when you move yourself around. Yeah, he was he was walking back to the other room, I guess, and went to a dead zone. Yeah, he probably went to a dead zone. Oh, there we go. Now you're n- now you're okay. Yeah. Yeah, the kid just started playing games. You could you um, could you yeah. could shine a little yeah, more. I, I, was, I was a hero last night because I was I had the show going. Yeah. I had the show going while I was getting my drink. Yeah. And the yeah. wife was there, and you were saying, "Oh no, there he is again." Oh, there yeah. we go. Yeah, there and the go. wife, the wife was listening while I was getting my drink ready, and you were saying, "Oh, where's Brian tonight?" Oh yeah, we're missing Brian tonight. Yeah. So I felt, yeah. I felt so special. Well, well, you know, I um, I got a, I got a package in the mail today. Oh. Uh, and I didn't know what it was, so I ripped it open, and luckily I ripped it open just right because there were two things that you didn't want to rip. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. But I didn't know what was inside, and what was inside was this lovely face mask. Hmm. These are different than the normal kind. Mine are too small. Is that yeah, one small this is you? Kind of, yeah, it's kind of small. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's, yeah. that's what mine are, too. Yeah, but these are from your company, right? Yeah, yeah, Cepheid. Yeah. 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 Uh, my uh, money just don't hurt me. Also, also, I like it when you can pinch the thing and yeah. you know. That's why I, I like the disposable ones still. Okay, so but then what he also sent me were these things. First of all, explain what this is. Oh, that's that's one of our cartridges, but there's no reagents or liquids in there. Right, it's just empty. So that's the you pop the top. They'll take your sample. You pop the top, and they put it in the the Q-tip. Oh, oh I see. Yeah, yeah, in the big hole. Yeah. Oh, and then they I see. But what, what is what is this for perfume? No, that's just some. Uh, the, <laughs> no, no, that's just some cream for your hands. <laughs> oh, is, is it cream? Stuff. Oh, there is cream in here. Is, yeah, it's, is this san- it's just, uh, sanitizing cream? Sanitizer, yeah. Yeah, they wow. started doing some swag for our company, so. Yeah, but the best part about this was, hold on a second, I, I can only show a photograph of it because we put them on our refrigerator. Ah. Uh, you see? Hmm. Those are some very nice pictures done by a very famous artist <laughs> known as ah. Ad- Adrian oh. Neary. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. And see, one of them even Very says, nice. one of them says Alex. I can't remember which one now. Yeah. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so uh, uh, we, we have those up on our refrigerator. I mean, because we don't have any kids, so why not put them up on the refrigerator, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, she knew I was getting that package, and I was going to the post office, and so she goes, oh, let me draw something. So I said, okay. Oh, mm-hmm. really? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. She then. does her proportions pretty good. Mommy teaches her because mommy's a very, really good jar for artists. So. Let me see here. Proportions. Y- y- yeah. Um, Four you're... years old legs. and. Yeah, and you're right. The proportions are right. You know, yeah. they're very good. And uh, this, is, this is one, if you can see it right here. You see? Alex. Uh, there we go. Isn't that cute? Uh, Isn't that adorable? Ah, oh, you got that. That's such a cute kid, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and she's a real ham, isn't she? Yes, she wants to go outside. She she's in line when we're going like Home Depot, and she's doing her little pink, pink, black, pink dance, and, and that's so funny. But you say she has her own language too. Yeah, yeah, she'll start talking. I think a lot of kids do, but yeah, they should start talking and singing, and yeah. Oh. She's she's entertaining. She's so. very entertaining. She's very yeah. entertaining, and and she, you know she's kind of like the uh, the star of the show at the la- in the last five minutes. <laughs> yeah, and she knows I'm going on the show, and she goes, "I want to go on the show," and I said, "No, not till later." <laughs> not till later. Here we talk about adult things. <laughs> yeah. You know what I did? I I keep getting these these things that say we can't monetize this show. So then I appeal it, and then they look at it, and then they monetize it, okay? But sometimes they don't. So I looked at a show they refused to monetize, and I um, read this thing that stated it. I finally found a place where they can kind of state the reasons why, and they said things like nudity, frank discussions of sex, you know, yeah. I mean... 
this show? You know, I mean, if if I knew that I wasn't that, that they were not monetizing me because of nudity, I would have lots of nudity on the show and get a much larger audience. <laughs> we lost Jeff. He probably won't be back with us as soon as he figures out what went wrong. He was offended. Huh? He was what? He was offended by the nudity. He was offended he was by the nudity. Offended. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, I, I'm getting so sick of it that what I'm doing now is I'm not, uh, here he comes, I'm not um, um, monetizing it, at, at least the live version of it. So you don't have to watch the commercial because I go, screw them. They're just going to non monetize it anyway, the live version, not the recorded version that I do. They're not going to monetize it. So screw them. I won't let them get any money. Because you know most of the money they get is goes to them, doesn't come to me. And why should I even put a penny in their pocket? And believe me, I don't represent any large amount of money. I'm not going to break Google if tomorrow I stop running commercials. But it makes me feel better. Okay, you know. Hey, maybe they objected to bathtub Brian. Maybe they objected to Bathtub but that Brian. Was, no, this was two nights ago. Bathtub Brian wasn't right. on that show. You know. And, uh, and he doesn't represent nudity. You know, he's very careful no, about well, that. He, it's close. It's close, yeah. but no cigar, so to speak. I mean, no cigar, what did we right. talk about two nights ago that made him think nudity? Uh, I don't know. You know, I mean... Uh, they for a while they had a thing in the beginning where you couldn't talk about COVID. Oh, uh, yeah. Really? And then all of a sudden they changed their mind because people started yelling. I mean, why can't we have a discussion of COVID? It's important Maybe because we were talking about cuties. That movie. Uh, cuties? No, that was last night. That was last week. Um, oh no, last night. Yeah. No, and I as I say, so. I put up two versions of this show. One is the one that's being recorded right now. I hope I may have screwed up tonight. But it, the one that's recording right now, okay, and then there's the one that they record as I'm doing the show, and then what they do is they put it up uh, afterwards, uh, so it appears on its own, and it's really taken from the live broadcast uh, by them. So there are two versions that are basically identical, except the first one has all the commercials we run at the beginning of the show, and then I go by the next day, and edit those out so it's virtually identically the same shows and one gets demonetized and the other one doesn't you know i hate these motherfuckers okay <laughs> there, we, there, there we go with more demonetize, demonetizing we lost uh, jeff again huh hmm. i don't get it hello john larkin how are you pretty good i got a headache but I'm okay. A headache? What from? I don't know. I just, uh, I haven't eaten all day today. And oh, I, that, got, I that, don't know. I got like indigestion. So I guess it's kind of feels like. Uh, it's headache, the COVID. You know? It's the COVID. No, I don't think so. You got, the, you got, you got the COVID. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. No. I've been staying home, man. I haven't gone out. So there's no yeah. way I could have caught it. What's interesting, I, I'm from San Francisco, so I know the, the town intimately. And, and John Larkin does not live on Larkin Street. Now, you should move to Larkin Street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless John yeah, Larkin know. isn't really your name and you're using that name, you know. <laughs> I, uh, I should, yeah. Yeah. Um, what was it? There was a cross street in the marina... And one day I realized that a radio announcer in San Francisco had taken his radio name from the cross streets. Hmm. I can't remember what they were. Maybe it was something Steiner. I don't know. But huh. I, can't, I can't remember now. But uh, remember, huh? remember when the alligator was in the lake that time and uh, those idiots from some radio station came and you, you were giving them a hard time because they called you <laughs> What, what, remember that? What was it? I I don't remember it. There, there was there was some somebody somebody had a exotic animal of an alligator of some sort, mm -hmm. and it got 
it would got in some lake in the Presidio or something yeah, oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. And it became like national news. Everybody was calling, oh, alligators in San Francisco. And everybody was calling up and they called you and you gave, you were giving the guy a hard time. <laughs> what? Because it was so asinine, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know something I don't remember? I remember it vaguely. Okay. I got these weird memories just stick in my head. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I don't remember, uh, but it, it, it's somewhat vague. Okay, so uh, we'll leave it yeah. at that. Um, people many times say, oh, you remember the time you did blah, blah, blah on your show? And I go, I did. <laughs> the, the other day, I got mentioned by Howard Stern on his really? alleged radio show. And the reason I was is because the, the head of Metallica, Lars, whatever his last name is, said that I did something to play one of their records and made a big deal out of the fact that I was, uh, I was, I helped in that or something. And then Howard said, oh yeah, Alex Bennett, he's a legendary disc jockey from San Francisco who <laughs> later moved to New York. Later moved to New York, you idiot. <laughs> I worked down the hall from you. You should know you came down and saw me once. <laughs> you know, it's like he lives, he's like Trump. He, he has this state of denial about me. Um, and uh, so I'm that disc jockey that was in San Francisco. I mean, I don't know. I think his name was Bennett. I can't remember exactly. <laughs> I was like Trump. That's what I'm saying, you know. Yeah. Uh, to Trump's uh, denial isn't a state. It's an ele part of the Electoral College. Um, yes. But anyway, uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, today, anybody been watching Bill Barr? What is with this moron? What is oh, his no. problem? He's off, he's off the deep end. Well, we all know that COVID and being forced to stay indoors is the worst thing since slavery. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me get this straight. <laughs> slavery, they put people in chains, they whip them, they rape them, uh, they use them as forced labor. And uh, having to stay in your house during COVID is something you are asked to do to save your life. Uh, and he was, talk he was talking about a national lockdown where there's never Shut no one ever said anything about a yeah. national there's lockdown. No national lockdown everybody has been in in europe they did it in europe they said you can't go outdoors and if you do you better have a reason otherwise you're getting a ticket yep. okay uh but here we've never had an enforced lockdown and really in texas that would have nipped the whole thing in the butt yeah okay and and here in new york uh, I guess if we were lucky that New Yorkers are tenacious enough that when the governor asked them to stay indoors, they stayed indoors. Yeah, I didn't go out for, what, three, four months, something like that, you know? Incredible amount of time. Um, but I did it, one, I stayed indoors <clears throat> out of fear, you know, and we didn't know how it was spread. And I, I did it also because Hey, I was told that was the best way to take care of this thing. Yes, Charlie. You know, when, when uh, on May 1st, when Texas opened up everything, we mm -hmm. had 17,000 COVID cases. So we've had 683,000 cases since May 1st. Does, the, does your wow. governor admit there was a problem finally? Nope. No. No. What kind of moron is he? Well, he, that begs the question. Trump's ass. Huh? He kisses yeah. Trump's Trump. ass. It just makes it makes no sense at all, you know. Uh, you know and and I was, I was encouraged. I was encouraged when I heard Barr said what he said about slavery because I thought, gee, at least he understands that slavery was a bad thing. You know, for a while there, I would have wondered about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it wasn't bad for the economy. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah, right. Yeah. It helped the economy. No, I mean, 
all, the reason you stay indoors, okay, go outdoors, get sick. All right, goodbye. See you later. You know, where, where do we send the roses? You know, I mean, it's, it's a matter of, I mean, here in New York, we were literally living in fear. And I'm kind of still living a little in that fear. I told Marjorie the other day, I said, you know, it's things aren't getting worse, although, you know, we're, we're right at that almost 1% level, and we don't want to go over that. And I said, and then there's this guy, I can't remember which company it was, but some mortgage house or something like that in the city decided they were going to have everybody come back to work, and everybody came back to work, and somebody came down with COVID, so they sent them all back home. All right? And I said to her, you know, I wouldn't think about going back to the office. She's going there about two, three times a week now, and I told her, don't. You know, you don't have to. And her boss, the guy that is ostensibly her boss, said to her, we don't want you coming in. Stay at home. Stay do home. all your work from home. If you can do it from home, do it from home. In fact, buy yourself another computer that's just for that. You know, if, if, you, need, if you need another computer, do not come to work if you don't have to. Uh, and, um, you know, that's the way it is. That's the way it should be. So, you know, whatever. Yes, uh, yes, Jeff. Did you guys hear that in Connecticut that uh, you have to wear, uh, you have to cover your face mm -hmm. when you go in a restaurant or in a show, in a store? Yeah. Almost anywhere well in stores that makes sense but if you're going to a restaurant how do you eat there's a certain rule on it and i can't remember what it is well i think if you're sitting at a table and the people you're with are members of your family this is pretty safe and then if those tables are six feet apart you got a little bit of coverage that way okay so it's safe to take off your mask and eat dinner um but I, you know, I don't know that I'm ready for that. I mean, I, I did some outdoor dining, you know, um, because I figure that that has enough distance and there's air and, you know, the circulation mm -hmm. going on. But when you go into a restaurant, there's not a lot of circulation there. You know, they, they do some. They got an air conditioner going and they got some maybe an air purifier going. But uh, uh, there, there's only one kind of filter and it's very expensive and won't work on every air purifier that will kill the COVID. Um, but if you don't have that, so mm -hmm. I don't know what our, our governor said on the 30th of the month, he's going to allow indoor dining to exist 25% occupancy. Okay. And that the rules have to apply, you know, when people enter, everybody gets their temperature taken. Right. Um, and, and, uh, uh, you know, things like that. Little rules that make it terrific. So, anyway. I, where's everybody else tonight? You know, we haven't heard from, we haven't heard from Rob in a while. Rob, are you out there? Are you alive? I don't know what happened to Rob. I've got to, i got to write him and see. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, so, uh, and also, I want to say to anybody out there who happens to be a Trump supporter, we would love to have you call this program. And as long as you're respectful, you won't be treated like crap, okay? We'll treat you <laughs> respectfully. Uh, we want that other opinion as well, but you know, we're just a bunch of uh, red diaper babies and uh, what the hell. You, now, there was another thing. Did anybody see this? Um, there was some kind of hearing they were having, and I can't remember who the guy was. He was like the head of the, I don't know, he was the head of us. Uh, one of our, like, Homeland Security, huh? FBI. Is it the FBI? Yeah. yeah, I think I think that's who you're talking about. Yeah, and he said, and this is something I've been saying for the longest time, he said, uh, Antifa is a philosophy. It's not a movement or a group. Yeah. 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 Now, I wonder no how shit. that, huh? Yeah. I wonder how that. No shit. Yeah, I want, and that was from the FBI. They're saying, the biggest single threat we have here in America, he said, in my opinion, uh, are white supremacists. 
Yeah, I'm, and I, 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 I would agree with that, too. So now let's look at uh, Donald Trump. Who is he going after? Antifa. He's going after Antifa. Uh, if he knew where to find him, he'd really get him, you know. Yeah. And 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 um, he, you know, he, he he he. Well, I can't remember what the other thought was I was trying to have here, but you know what I'm trying to say. He's just so he's so out of it. He's so so wrong on everything. You know, he always he always threatens too. You know, what's the guy's name? Yashogi or whatever the guy. Remember, they cut him up in a bunch of pieces and yeah. got him out of there. Yeah, he, he threatened, we will find out who did this, and they're going to pay and all this stuff. And oh, Kosoji. Uh, yeah, he, he didn't do anything. Yeah, no, he didn't do anything. No, he, all, he did, well, all he did was kiss Saudi Arabia's ass. And, exactly. and the, 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 the prince, who was the mastermind behind the murder. Mm -hmm. you know. Trump bragged to um, Woodward that, that uh, he saved um, the prince... The prince's ass because everybody was all mad at him and he got him, everybody to leave him alone. Oh, really? That was part of the book, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then he then he wants to tell you that he just you know he created a peace accord between Israel and uh, Saudi Arabia and there's one other country what was it Bahrain or something like that. Yeah, they weren't even at war with the. No, Israel. you can't sign a peace agreement when there isn't a war. You sign an agreement to get together and do stuff. OK, yeah. you get together and say, well, we've kind of been adversaries over the years, but now we're going to try and do things cooperatively. But it wasn't a peace agreement. There was no war. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, he lied from day one, day one, 3.5 million people at the inaugural. He's lied since day one. By the yeah. way, they had a shot of that <laughs> inaugural on this documentary I was watching because it's you know, it was a documentary about Trump's psychology. And they showed his inauguration. And they showed the people out there. You could have dropped a bomb in some parts of that mall yeah. and not killed anybody. Yeah, they, were, they showed those empty uh, those, those empty uh, grandstands, you know, yeah. along the street. <laughs> that yeah. was funny. <laughs> yeah. You know that gets under his my skin. Favorite, my favorite of all time was the Sharpie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Sharpie where he uh yeah, I'm trying to remember now where he Well the, the hurricane, which the hurricane. way it was gonna go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but he, he had he said it was gonna hit Alabama or something like that, and it wasn't the case. Yeah. So he took a Sharpie and threw over the map and extended it and said, See? Yeah. And didn't what he drew look a lot like a penis? Yeah. If I remember correctly, yeah, yeah. they have a new they have a new hurricane warning map, and it's just all blue. They say we don't want to we don't want to make everybody worry, so we're not going to show any hurricanes, just like Trump. Right. Right. We don't want to make anybody <laughs> panic, so we're not going to show any hurricanes from now on. Boy, what a maroon! Oh, look, did you send me this cap? Uh, I think so. Or no, no, I think I bought this. I know I I sent you a Kango, Alex. I remember. You sent me a what? A Kango cap. A Kango cap. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've never gotten used to that. I don't know why. And those are popular. Yeah, that's why I figured you would like that one. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, and I saw this cap tonight, and I figured, eh, I haven't worn this in a while, so I want to look like I'm selling newspapers in New York. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Alex, I heard uh, Laws mention you on the show because I'm a big Metallica that's fan. What, that's what I, I was Oh, it was told. so good. Alex Howard must have shit his pants when he said well, that. Well, what did he say? Because I think you must have played a song by them, and he said it really helped them at the time. I mean, I'm a huge Metallica Really? Fan. Because and I Alex, can't was, remember in my entire was, life play ever playing a Metallica record. You know what it could have been, I think? They played with an orchestra. I have the CD. I wonder if you played that song with the San Francisco Orchestra. No. That could have been the I one. don't think so, but all I know no. is that Howard said I was a uh, a legendary disc jockey in San Francisco. You must have been jealous of that. You asshole. I worked down the <laughs> hall from you. You got mad at me one day. You came into my studio. Yeah, we talked. Show. We talked. I was one of the few people you ever talked to at Sirius, okay? And I'm that, oh, and later on, I worked in New York City. Yeah. Yeah, right down the hall. 
You worked in New York before he ever fucking had a job. Well, I, I worked in New York when he listened to the show and learned how to do radio. Anyway, yeah. you know. That's <laughs> uh, the wallpaper. Well, I heard about this yesterday. So, uh, to oh, where did, what happened to Tony? Oh, God, the wallpaper. <laughs> he's, uh, the wallpaper. He's got, uh, oh. Mommy time. Oh. Mommy duty. <laughs> God, the wallpaper. Boy. Oh, look at that. What is that pattern that's on there? That thing's all over. Huh? It's all over, right? That's the kind it's of wallpaper that drives people crazy. You know? Mm -hmm. You know. It, Let's connect the dots. Huh? <laughs> Looks like ostrich skin. Yeah. Isn't it oh. set off maybe, epileptic maybe, seizures? Maybe it's Versace. Yeah, Versace. You know, we've never <laughs> asked you this, Tony, and, and I think we really, it's time for us to ask you. Because uh, we've always kidded about that room with the wallpaper. It's nothing to kid about. It's what, house of horror. It's like what, what is that room? This room is the dining room. <laughs> yeah. It's really? the dining room. Really? That's what my mother, I don't know if she calls it the dining room. Because she is stuck in the 1950s bubble, Alex. It's crazy. Yeah. She is like, we're still watching Andy Griffith on TV land. I know every episode I can do the lines. Yeah. yeah, she doesn't get into anything new. She can't. Now your father died, and they were yeah. He passed away of cancer, and and your inheritance was your mother. Yeah, and yeah. he's probably cracking jokes. You know what he said to me on his deathbed? What? She's a great woman. They were the polar opposites, Alex. Polar opposites. Yeah. I mean, night and day. And yeah. she said, "Your mother." He says, "Good luck." He said, "She's a talk because she's she's nice, but she never leaves me alone." I think I'll, you never. We realize that, Tony. We realize oh, that. Oh, Your God. personality oh. exudes that. Yeah. Oh, she's don't... behind you. She's behind oh, you. Be quiet. She <laughs> knows how to. Alex, the other night, listen to this, guys. The other night, I stay up all night watching TV or I'm doing something, reading. And I, she knows how to use the Amazon Alexa thing. I'm finally falling asleep with the radio on listening to the news. And you know when you get that nice sleep, I'm dreaming of like my, my I must have been like when my grandmother was still alive, one of those nice 1970s dreams. And all of a sudden I hear, Anthony, come in my room fast. I got up out of bed thinking she fell, right? Can you get me water? I says, Ma, you make it sound like you're getting murdered in here. My throat's so dry. I need water. I says, you got to be kidding me. She says, do me a favor. Don't call me with that. Somebody's in the room. You know, it's funny. One time she had to dream, Alex, that somebody robbed the house. I said, Ma, what color was he? He was black. I said, Ma, he couldn't have been white. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. But I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. She's racial profiling in her sleep. Oh, she yeah. me the she's I racial. Like, oh, wait, wait, I love she's that line. Black. She said, I love that black. line. She's racial profiling in her sleep. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's gone. I was going to say, at least she said he was black because my grandfather made me use not not a bad, bad word, but he didn't like He said other words for all nationalities. Old yeah. Italian guy. Yeah. Yeah, I kept saying, why are you going out with these slant eyed girls? Because I was dating a lot of Asian girls. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, boy. I, you know, uh, it, uh, yeah. Oh, well, we've lost Tony again and we're stuck with the wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> The light up. I don't know. I don't know about you, but whenever I see that wallpaper, I want to kill somebody. I don't know what it is. It just screams at me and says, "Kill me, kill me." She wanted a peppermint patty. See uh, what I'm dealing with? Uh, here comes, here comes Patrick. Patrick's going to join us. Let me go. Hey, oh, right. There's Patrick. Hey, Patrick. Patience. We're just sitting here having a fun time with with uh, with uh, um, Mama's boy Tony. Uh, you know, yeah. yeah, but I mean, listen, she's giving you employment, you know, he makes, you're right. I can't complain. He would not be nice. He, he, would, he would not be nice to his mother unless he got paid for it. And he's I'm proof right. of that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. When I hear you say you got to keep her alive, you're damn right. You're not going there was an ahead. ad on TV the other day about some, about some woman going, you know, I'm getting older and I needed help. And now I have my daughter-in-law here to help oh, me yeah, and she one. gets paid for it. Why don't you check this out? So, I mean, it's become quite the thing, you know, where people are being paid to take care of people they love. Kevin uh, is, I believe Kevin's been given the right to do that, you know. And, and he, he's got better life insurance, health insurance than I do, okay? 
and he got it as a result. Well, here comes Kevin. Okay, he, he you got it as a result of just of taking a bunch of tests, right? And then they send you a check every week, and you got health insurance and everything, right? Yeah. Uh, hello, Kevin. You got on. paid for helping now somebody, get... right? Are you getting paid for helping your mother or something like that, or? No, I'm doing it for free. Okay, but you, but you 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 had to like go get the right to do it and so on and be classified. Yeah, certification. What? A certification. A certification. Yeah. Okay, so you're certified. Tony cert had, uh, Tony certified my, my too. My mom had uh, had Alzheimer's and I had to take care of her for about seven years before she passed away. Mm -hmm. This was back in the '90s. I didn't get any, but she she was fucking rich, so I didn't have to worry about it and she could you know her money i was able to take care of it take care of her with her money yeah yeah well, apparently she didn't leave you anything because you're living in the tenderloin she did she did she left <laughs> I, i'm she left me a lot oh okay oh, all i'm right. just fucking lazy i'm i'm like uh i'm like a procrastinator i, I could move out of here but i don't know yeah yeah well i don't have to work though or anything of course not of course not yeah. so patrick how you doing Doing all right. Yeah, I think our president was out to visit your fine state today, right? Uh, that's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah, he held a he held a uh, I don't I don't know if it was a masked ball, but uh, he uh, he was out there today. So, because Wisconsin's a very pivotal state this year, oh, yeah. everybody's going out there and wooing Wisconsin. Yeah, and it's real big. Not, and I think uh, the Democrats learned their lesson because I don't think Hillary visited it once. Well, you know, she didn't go. I don't think. Huh? Yeah, she didn't go to it. But uh, hasn't Biden's been there? Already. Yeah, Biden's been there, and this is the second time for Trump because he was there for that riot that was going on. You know, uh, so. Uh, uh, but uh, how 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 the, how's the weather out there, Patrick? Because it's getting it's getting cooler here finally. Yeah, it's fucked up, and I'm ready for summer. So you're ready for summer? <laughs> that was just but summer was two weeks ago. <clears throat> yeah. See, I yeah, like. We, uh, we only had I don't know maybe maybe twenty days, about eighty degrees or above. Yeah. So I keep, well, I keep waiting for the global warming people keep yapping about, <laughs> and I I haven't seen it yet, so I'm well, waiting. If you mm -hmm. want to see it, why don't you go to California right now yeah. and breathe the uh, air? Because if I'm going to move, I'm moving <laughs> past California and into the middle of the fucking Pacific. Yeah. Before. Yeah. I'm not going to live in that on the continent. Oh, by the way, that's somebody else we haven't heard from in a while. It's Howard from Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. thinking that myself. Yeah. I'm friends with him on Facebook, and I see him posting all the time, but yeah, he hasn't Well, been next time you t you're on Facebook, say Alex was asking where you were. Yeah, you know? okay. Okay? Yeah. Uh, because I, I really liked Howard. If nothing more to see him there with that fake beach in back of him. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, um, but it, 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 so you would, where would you move? Hawaii, someplace like that, Tahiti. That's exactly where I'd go. Where Hawaii? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I've been to Hawaii. I don't. I, I, be honest with you, I don't like Hawaii. I I I would there, fell in love with it, and that, that's all I need. So. But then again, I don't think <laughs> I like places with sun. I mean, I you know I didn't like uh, Florida, hated Hawaii. But I, I don't know. Hot better, humid, mm. doesn't matter. Oh, I because love it. I love it when it gets cold. I love it when it gets cold. I'm a snow dog, you know. I can deal with cold. I mean, like when it's 20 below zero here, that doesn't bother me. It's the snow. Also, the, wheel, oh, the wheelchair yeah. doesn't work in the snow. Well, yeah, right? yeah. You're pushing fucking uh, on ice. So if it's 20 below zero... I can still do what I need to do, go where I need to go, you know, whatever. Same as if it's 110. I can do the same you, shit. You don't have snow tires for that that thing? Like, you know. It's, it's a matter of weight. Yeah. I don't weigh. I only weigh about 100 and 
112 pounds, 100, yeah. 115 pounds. Yeah. And it, it just like with any any vehicle, you know, sports car, you need weight in, well, lighter cars. You, you yeah. need to put sandbags okay. in yeah. the back to go on ice. Mm -hmm. But same with me. I mean, I only weigh so much and, you know, I somebody who's 400 pounds, well, I guess, they could probably lumber through the snow pretty easily, you know. But I can't. Can't so. you? Can't you add weight to the wheelchair? I mean, you know. Well, that one that I could add weight to the wheelchair, but that makes it harder for me to push. Yeah. Okay. Where as if I were four hundred pounds, you're used to your own weight. Yeah. And right. It's different. So you know. Okay. Yeah. But uh, um, um, y you know. Um, what I was saying is I love cold weather, and part of the reason I love cold weather is then I have an excuse for not going out. <laughs> During the uh, summer, I've always got Marjorie going, you really should go out for a walk. You really should get out there. My argument is it's too hot. You know, mm. I, I like cold. I've always liked cold. I always like getting bundled up and everybody else being bundled up. I hate jackets. I hate long sleeves. I don't, I, don't, I, I don't own a sweatshirt. I don't own a, a hoodie. I don't own a uh, sweater. Um, the only thing I have long sleeve is one dress shirt Probably. and then, uh, two or three sport coats. And yeah. then my, my winter jackets I have. But mm -hmm. I hate wearing a jacket. And if it's, if it's anywhere over 40 degrees, you know, mm -hmm. like... It has to be 40 before I even consider a jacket. And there are times where it's 30 degrees or 20 where I won't wear a jacket either. Wow. You know. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I, I love it. I love the cold. I mean, I, um, uh, to me, uh, what's really nice is if you're out in the country somewhere and it's snowing and you're inside a really nice little, like, chalet of sorts and there's a fire going in the fireplace and you know that to me is wonderful i to the outdoors yeah you know it can i can take it or leave it you know but i like california in, in october is great well great. california san francisco is a whole different story i once described san francisco as america's only air-conditioned city yeah you know, it could, you could have a 90-degree day, and then come nighttime, that fog rolls in. Yeah, yeah. Air conditioning, you know? Uh, and, and also, I got to tell you, there's nothing more romantic than fog. It's, it's, yeah. it, 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 I loved fog. I grew up yeah. in fog. I grew up on hills. I, I, I grew up on the... I think the second steepest hill in San Francisco, Filbert Street. Mm. And, and everybody wondered why I always walked in a, at a slant. And I think it was because of walking up and down that, that Filbert Street when I was a kid, you know, because you're always leaning into it, you know. You know, you know what the, uh, the steepest street is? The steepest street has got to be in Lombard, right? No, no, it's 24th Street between Rhode Island and DeHaro in Potrero Hill. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, I lived on it. It was crazy. Well, go ahead. And it, and it had um, yeah. fucking go clap. <laughs> <laughs> it had um, <laughs> it it had a cobblestone street, mm -hmm. and it was like the only cobblestone street left in San Francisco. And when I was living there in the '90s or the early 2000s, the city came and they want they wanted to pave over it for some reason. I don't know why. So the whole neighborhood came up and said no way no way forget it you can't do that and they said well we have to do some repairs and we and we got rid of those um those cobblestones so we don't have them anymore so we're going to have to pave over the whole thing and this old guy he was probably 90 years old he lived on the street and he was at the meeting you know they had like a town you know meeting yeah goes, oh i got i got a whole bunch of them from the last time they moved them or something in my backyard so they said, oh, fuck. Well, so well they, I am, uh, you know, them. you know where I really uh, uh, learned my, I, you know, I learned to drive in California. I don't even know if I can drive anymore. It's been so long since I've driven a car. 
But uh, my great skill, and the one I was always proud of, and, and, and only San Franciscans really know how to do this superbly. You know what I'm talking about, Brian? Drive a stick you, shift with the clutch. You, you get, you, no. You're driving a shift car. Yeah. And you get to the top of a hill, but you can't exactly go over the top of the hill because it, 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 you, you're having to stop before the intersection. Stop sign, yeah. And so you put on your brake. Now, you have to then, by the ability to shift, you know, once it's time to go, let go of the brake, hit the gas, and let out the clutch. Yep. And I I was perfect at that. Okay, <laughs> you know sometimes if it was really rough. I'd have to use the handbrake, and then yeah. let it slowly off, and then yeah. let go of the clutch. But I mean it, that that was that was uh, that was something that I was very good at. I don't think I could do it now, but I could do it now because all cars are automatics, and you, it's very easy to do with an automatic. With an automatic, as long as you're you know, in drive, uh, as long as you're in drive, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're good to go. Cause it'll, it'll just stop on its own and hold itself there. You know, you just put a little gas on there and it keeps it going. But I, uh, I, I, I was years before I actually drove a, 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 a an automatic. I, I really loved a stick. Love driving a stick. I don't. Does anybody drive a stick anymore? Anybody here will drive a stick? It just doesn't I even exist. I drive a one wheeler now. Huh? I one drive a one wheeler. What? Electric you, uh, unicycle. Uh, you you have a unicycle? Yeah, electric one. You stand. Though I showed it to you. You stand on it and you lean forward and it goes forward and you lean back and it stops. You got one big wheel. Yeah, big yeah. Wheel. It's, a, it's about that big and it's got like two. Yeah. You put your well, feet on like that. Well, you know what I'm going to send you for that is a clown yeah. nose, a little clown nose. You can, yeah, yeah. Can hey, make you get good juggling. Yeah, yeah. Good juggling. But so anyway, late. There you go. <laughs> so anyway, so I mean that you know, uh, but uh, it's been so long since I've driven. I'm, I'm. I just wonder if I can even drive anymore. You know, it worries me. Probably if I just got behind the wheel of the car within a block, I would remember everything I needed to know. But, you know, I also get drowsy lately. So I'm just afraid of all those things, you know. And it's and Marjorie can drive, but she doesn't want to. So it's up to me to do it, you know. But, uh, you know, I, I, it's, uh, ah, it's all the things that happen when you get older, you know. But... Um, so anyway, so then we also had today in the news, Bill Barr, who, who thinks this guy is a good idea? I mean, God, what an idea. You, you know, I mean, we yeah. should put all these people, these demonstrators, we should charge them with sedition. Now, the great m amount of people demonstrating are peacefully demonstrating and voicing their opinion. All right. That's the American way. And what if the he's police a, weren't he, attacking them, huh? If the police didn't attack them, they probably wouldn't get riled up. Yeah, but if the police uh, just kind of kicked back and said, "Hey, well, you guys, you know, be cool," but they don't. They get all in. Well, I don't know what he's worried. About, what he's worried about. I mean, if he wants an act of sedition, I'll be happy to give it to him. Okay, you know, if demonstrating is an act of sedition, then I'll be happy to be mm -hmm. be seditious, because that's my right as an American is to protest. Yeah. You know, and to petition my government. Uh, but, you know, this idea of, you know, all these people are rioters, you know. Uh, quite frankly, nobody's proven to me that the rioters are, are left-wing activists. I think they happen to be right-wingers who are trying to create a problem and, and create hostility and make it look as though the right, the left wingers are doing all this stuff. Yeah, uh, the the guy that shot the uh, federal guy in Oakland, he was a boogaloo boy. Yeah, and, and, and they've, they've, mentioned they've said, him. They've said that tried, to, tried yeah. to pin him on the left at the RNC. Yeah, which total bullshit. Well, they said that a lot of these people who were demonstrating, uh, who were making trouble, who were th throwing paint at the building, it turns out weren't 
Me Too, what is it, uh, Black Lives Matter people. They were um, people who wanted to make trouble just to make the demonstrators look bad. Yeah. But, um, you know, I mean, I know uh, uh, Patrick's probably disagreeing with me a little bit on this one, but on the other hand, I don't know if he wants to say anything either. So <laughs> I will, uh, you know. Um, listen, I, you know, it, it, there was this term that came up when, uh, oh, what's his name, the black uh, uh, senator died. Um, uh, Tom Scott? No. Um, the Republican. John Lewis? John Lewis. That he had a saying, and the saying was, good trouble, make good trouble. Was that the term? Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. And that's really what I think you should do. I think making good trouble is is what people have to do. I mean, you don't believe in what your government's doing, you have to protest against it. That's being a good American, you know. Um, so, I don't know. But I don't want to get Patrick all mad at me. So, I'll, I'll, I'll keep quiet too, Patrick. Uh, mm -hmm. Look at that look he's giving me. Um, so anyway, um, what, what else was happening in the news? Um, nothing scientifically that's happening. The fires out in California and Oregon and Washington have just been devastating. We've had some clear days. Today was the best day so far. Clear and we can't smell it, but I think they say the winds are going to come back down like... Uh, over the weekend or something but isn't it supposed to rain it rained actually yesterday morning mm -hmm. it like drizzled all of those streets were wet but it wasn't like a rain rain just like a drizzle would rain put these fires out necessarily i heard somebody say that it might actually oh. encourage the fires oh really uh, uh, it would help if you know if we got a good rain it'd be great yeah yeah but it's gonna happen up north well listen that's what you guys get for not raking your leaves yeah. You know, um, thirty-three million acres to rake. The, what, what was so funny was that the the president was yelling and screaming about how you people didn't manage your forest lands well and blah blah blah. And what is it? Six fifty? Is it fifty-seven or sixty-seven percent of the uh, lands the in lands in California? Well, no, it are are are. But, uh, but the forest where the fires are is uh, almost 100 percent federal land. Federal land, yeah. Yeah. Which should have been taken care of by the federal government. Right, and they never do. They never do. And the other three yeah. percent is uh, state land or something like that, and the rest of it is just privately owned land. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it it's it, it, isn't it, 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 how, it? Do you get this feeling Armageddon is here? I mean, yeah. first we got we got the first we have the COVID, then we've got the fires, then we've got the hurricanes. What else has happened? There are there are a few other little. I'm feeling a little bit better about the election. I think, um, I, I I think Trump's. He, he, I don't know. Yeah, but that's not going to make the apocalypse go away. Oh yeah. Well, you know, I think it will. it'll it'll make the apocalypse further down the road. Well, no. What it will do is maybe it'll put somebody in there who who at least accept science is somewhat of an answer oh, yeah. to stuff. Yeah. But the fact sure. is that I don't think that the elimination of Trump is going to be the elimination of this apocalypse we're living in. I mean, literally, the you know, it, it's not just us. It's the whole world has the COVID problem. It's just that it's worse here than it is anywhere else. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, you just have to say, you know, all we're missing is the four horsemen. It's all we're missing here. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I mean, this is like a bad disaster movie where the skies are orange, as they are in those disaster movies. And, you know, all these horrible things are happening. And, you know, and what are we going to do about it? You know, um, in the case of Trump, I mean, I don't I don't blame him for the forest fires. Uh, and I, I don't blame him for COVID. I do blame him for the result of, of not taking care of the situation and letting it get worse. 
But any president who would be faced with this particular crisis would have a real crisis on his hands. And it's a question of how you deal with it. And just not recognizing that it's a problem uh, is kind of amazing. Has he, has he mentioned much of anything about the fires, for instance? And the whole, whole attitude about, well, you know, COVID is the worst in democratic states. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, that one I don't understand. He goes, if it wasn't for the blue states, we would be uh, probably lower than um, any other country. Well, that's such bullshit. There's, there's 90,000 deaths from red states. Well, listen, this blue state here that I live in, and this is one of your bluest states around, yeah. has solved the problem, or at least mitigated it. Uh, you know, where we yeah. had the most deaths and we had the most cases and all of that, we bent that curve to where it's now flatline, where we have no, we've never in, in a month gone over 500 cases a day in hospitals with this thing, where before we had 10,000 a day in hospitals, and we couldn't find the room for all those people in hospitals. So, you know. You know what I'm worried about? What? It's like how it's getting closer to the election. I'm worried about two things. Maybe you guys can answer this question, how you think it's going to shake out. Let's say Trump wins. Do you think they go crazy? Or if Trump loses, like, you think they get, I mean, I know that there's only so much they can do, but he seems like he's getting a little desperate, Trump. As yeah. the day grows closer, he's starting, he, he, the problem is he knows there must be internal polls that we don't know about. And I think he's getting, like, what I don't get is, like you just said, why would you say the blue states are worse? It's like he wants to turn everybody, because he knows he's not going to win them. So it's almost like we got to do Well, he doesn't, ha he doesn't worry about alienating them because they're not going to vote for him anyway. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't really care about anybody except for his base. Oh. I don't think he cares about his base. I think all he cares about is himself. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I see uh, people that he goes, like when I see him in front of farm machinery, I'm going, Trump, farm machinery? <laughs> What, what, yeah. What's wrong with this picture? I mean, you would have never, in New York, he wouldn't get near farm machinery. Right. You know, he'd be lucky if you he know, got near a backhoe. You know, <laughs> I mean, um, uh, it, this was just, was. It, these are not the people he would talk to, okay? These are not the people he would associate with. And he's acting like they're his pals. Yes, Robert. It, the thing that puzzles me, look, not being a Democrat or, or a Republican, I am a student of political science. And what puzzles the hell out of me is I always hear when he does a rally that he's um, he's throwing red meat to his base. He's doing this and that for his base. And I keep thinking to myself, you've already got your goddamn base yeah. What you need is yeah. to get beyond you your base build in order that. to win yeah. the fucking election. Never yeah. tried and, that. You know, feeding your base over <laughs> and over isn't getting you anywhere. Well, I, you I know, I think what he feels, logic. In, in all deference to him, what he feels is this worked for him once before. And so yeah. he feels it's going to work for him now. The only yeah. thing he doesn't take into account is this is four years later. The act is getting a little thin. You yep. know, people are a little getting a little full of this kind of thing going on. They see that he was not an effective president. Uh, and um, uh, it, it's a different game Maybe being played. And he really, what he needs to do is get out there and win over. Win, win me over. You know, yeah. he can win me yeah. over. I, I, I'm not beyond voting Republican if a good Republican runs. Yes, Brian and the debate when a debate happens every single subject you know what he's going to say exactly what he's going to say when they start talking about when the crisis when the covid hit he, he's going to bring up the old playbook of well I opened up you know I opened up or I, I closed the you know the china the all the airlines before anybody and everybody thought I was bad and all this stuff he's going to go by the exact same playbook for every single thing and what he should do if he really wants to be effective is be unpredictable. In other words, suddenly say something where everybody goes, did Trump say that? Yeah. You know, or 
you know, if, if you have a problem, you, you've been remiss in certain areas of your presidency, rather than deny them, admit it and say, oh, I was caught with my pants down. I didn't know that was going on. I didn't realize it. You know, you don't, you, you, by admitting some of your faults, you defuse the arguments against you. But he doesn't have that in his DNA. That's not yeah, the way he no. operates because Roy Cohn, uh, when he was um, his mentor, told him, you never admit you're wrong. Never. Ever. Yeah. And, and admitting you're wrong in the public eye is sometimes a sign of, hey, he's okay. You know? <clears throat> I mean, I didn't like I didn't like Al Sharpton at all. I couldn't stand Al Sharpton. And then I saw him in an interview recently when he said, when he was interview being interviewed by somebody who knew him way back in the days when he was portly, and um, had the whole Tawana Brawley thing going on here, and was just an absolute asshole. And he said, "Oh yeah, you knew me in the days when I was uh, not particularly the best kind of uh, person." And I went, he knows it, and he admits it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And since then, I look at him in an entirely different light because he knows he was a fool back then. And that's what I base my dislike about him on. So, you know. Yeah, but, but Trump doesn't want to change at all. Well, it, but Trump's problem is he's not a politician. You know, yeah. he's a PR guy. He's a, you know, but he, he knows how to, you know, be in a television show. He doesn't know how to, he doesn't know politics. And he, he won once because people were fed up and they just said, look, why don't we vote for him? Couldn't hurt. I think a lot of people, you got a lot of couldn't hurt votes, okay? He's not going to get those this time. So he's got to win other people over, and he's not attempting to go outside his base to get them. And I think that's his biggest problem. You know, I could even feel so sorry for him that he got caught in the middle of this whole COVID thing. If he just say, well, I was caught with my pants down, and I, I didn't think it was going to be this serious, but it turned out to be. And now that it is, and then do something, you know? But we didn't get that out of him. It was just, I will not admit that I was wrong. I will not admit that I was wrong. And, you know, so. But, um, uh, 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 Patrick, uh, do you think he's going to win? I mean, I'm not asking you a political opinion, but do you think he's going to win? Or do you think things are looking bad for him? Yeah, I, I, I do actually think he's going to win. You do? Really? And what do you base that on? Um, uh, I think because he's been out more than Biden has, um, I think, and this is just anecdotal evidence, and that's not the shit that you should use, but it, it's what I have in front of me. Um, and I think I've said this on the show in the past, um, I've got black friends who are not going to vote because they do not like Kamala Harris. Hmm. And I don't know how rampant that is within the African community, African American community, but it is within the friends that I have. And they are diehard Democrats, but they are going to sit out because they don't trust her. That's interesting, because the question is, do people vote for the vice presidential candidate or because of the vice presidential candidate? Well, here... I that, know I never have, but, you know. A lot, of, a lot of the people who are stating that, both white and black, within my little realm on Facebook, um, it has to do with Biden's gas and apparent uh, health issues. And they're afraid that Harris will take over very quickly if Biden wins. And it's a matter of they don't like her as vice president. Mm -hmm. 
because if he were to have to give up the presidency, she would be in charge. Mm -hmm. Let me and ask you this. I'm not so, comfortable with her. You said health issues. What health issues? Well, I said the apparent gaffes and, you know, okay. it, people, I, it, yeah. I, yeah. I don't necessarily buy into it. I'm just saying. I know, I know. I, so, and it appeared that it's dementia. And that is the thing that people are afraid of. And I know within my own family, that is a concern because it, it, it you know. It, well, that's, it, that's, that's how Trump is portraying him. He's trying to portray him as being a man who is not in full. Um, uh, but, but how can anybody compare Trump, I mean, mentally, mental, uh, you know, acuity or whatever, compare Trump to Biden. Well, when you I talk mean, about when you talk about health, I don't think Trump looks very healthy. No. And he's crazy. He, he, you know. he just he's so stupid. I mean, I think I would love to see a bunch of younger people running, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, somebody said the other night, I think I, it was on this show about Biden that, you know, that he makes gaffes. And I went, well, I'd rather he makes gaffes in some of the things that Trump has done by saying stuff that is just amazing, you know. It, all, the gaffes are just silly little things. You go, oh, ha, 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 that's what he said. But he hasn't said anything terrible. I don't know. It, you know, I, I don't disagree with you, Patrick. I, I don't know what the pulse of the nation is. It's looking good for Biden, but it looked good for Hillary, too, you know. Not as good for Hillary as it looks for, for Joe Biden. Um, and there's, I think the thing, the reason I think that he's, that Trump's going to lose is because I think there's a real groundswell among Trump haters. There are people who are not going to vote for Joe Biden. They're going to vote against Trump. Okay? So that's, you know, that's the, uh, but, you know, but I appreciate your opinion because I wanted to hear what you had to say because I, don't, don't touch. I, I know her. Okay, say hi. What What did she say? I hey, thank you for the pictures, Adrian. Thank you for the pictures you sent me. I love your pictures. See, I even have them on my phone here. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. See there? See? See? What are those? Those are your pictures. Huh? And they're on my refrigerator. Oh, okay. Anyway. Last night, last night when I thought she was speaking something else, she was saying, he watches CNN, he watches CNN. She gets the remote and always says CNN for me all the time. Yeah. So. <laughs> anyway, listen, I want to thank all of you for being here. We had a really nice show tonight. Okay. Charlie <laughs> Wallace, thank you. Uh, and uh, Robert Natali, always thank you. Thank you to Brian Neary and to... Uh, 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 John Larkin and to Jeff and to Tony and of course to you Patrick and Kevin thank you so much for calling as well uh, everybody uh, give a big wave goodbye and I will give a big wave goodbye the back see I'm like Joe Biden okay anyway uh, that's it thank you everybody that's our, uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight you want another citizen panel there's one right after this is over with with Jack Bishop, and he will be doing it on Skype uh, with a program called The Intersection. Meanwhile, I am Alex Bennett, and I will see you tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there and wear a mask. Thank you. Good night.